I'm going to start from here. I'm going to start from down here. Good morning. Good morning. 
Welcome to Emmanuel Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in Watertown, New York. Whether you are here with us for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time, we want to welcome you into service with us. It happens to be National Back to Church Sunday. Woohoo! Okay, maybe I'm the only one excited about that. Thank you. Somebody caught the hint. I am really excited to see you all here today. Uh, we like to start every service with this reminder that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at Emmanuel. We hope and pray that you feel that sense of welcome as you worship with us today. I'm going to ask, in preparation for worship, that we quiet our hearts, not our minds, but our hearts and our conversation as we listen to our centering moment. Good morning. <laughs> All right, there's some instruments over there. Use them. <laughs> I think you'll remember these songs. It's been a while since we played them, but Carol and I remembered them right away when we played them this morning, so I'm hoping you remember them too and you sing along with me and Carol and think about joining Praise Band. <sighs> Shall we? Mm -hmm. 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Sing louder, I got a frog in my throat. This one's more like a prayer. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted. 
you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you've died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love. Good morning, there we go. Good morning. Please join me in the opening prayer and Lord's Prayer. Divine Nurturer, we are thankful that we can come to you at any time. You have made it possible for us to come as we, ha, as we are, however we are. We rejoice in knowing that you walk with us whether the road is rough or it is smooth. You are steadfast. Help us to nurture our relationship with you and ourselves and each of us so that we may be a balm when none can be found. 
We pray all this in the name of the one that taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have a story for all ages. I'd like to welcome children and children at heart to come forward and sit in the first few rows. Um, and uh, as long with folks that may be in our little play, and I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm pleased to announce the winner of Luke's Candy Factory Sweepstakes. This year, we have two winners of our complimentary candy baskets. And the winners are Chris and Carol. Come on down and claim your prize. What did I, oh boy, oh boy, what did I win, what did I win? You won the giant bag of delicious candy. Giant. What are you going to do with your giant bag of delicious candy? I'm going to eat it all, of course. Oh, I'm going to share it. Oh, what did I win? <laughs> I'll tell you what you won. You also won a delicious bag of candy. And what are you going to do with your giant bag of delicious candy? I'm going to share it with all my friends. Wow, that is so generous. Wow, that is generous. What are you going to do with the candy that Carol gave you? Well, Carol shared with us, so we're going to share with all of our friends. Sharing is great. <clears throat> so Carol shared with you, so you'll share with others. What a way to pay it forward. And how do you feel, Miss Chris? Oh gosh, I ate all that candy and now I have a tummy ache. <laughs> and how do you feel, Carol? I feel like I made a lot of friends today. I'm so happy. <laughs> so tell me, who do you think did a better job of managing the candy? Chris or Carol? Thank you, and back to our regularly scheduled program.
You all sound great. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, it is once more and again that we are here. Hoping and praying that you will speak to us. Speak to us all at the same time, yet in the ways that we need to hear you. As individuals, as families, as friends, as people in need of your intervention, your grace, your peace. God, we pray that at the end of our time together, we might act more, be more, and do more like you in the world. We pray all of this in your holy names. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. Listen now for a word from God. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know that I'll do so, that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their homes. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. Then he asked the second, how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over the last few weeks, we have been seemingly parked, pun intended, in the book of Luke. Not by my own intention, but it seems that the writers of the lectionary would have us journeying through the book of Luke. I suppose it's because there's something for us to gain from this book. If you have been paying attention to anything that I've said over the last few weeks, then you know that Luke is prone to hyperbole. He uses really outlandish examples to get our attention, to get us to think about things that are rather practical, that we may find ourselves facing in our journeys with God today. Luke. Luke is also very subversive in the way that he writes. You see, on the surface, it may seem as though Luke is talking about someone who manages their money poorly and is shrewd in the management of people, and yes, that can be gained from reading this text, but I'd like to suggest that it is not the only thing that can be read from this text. 
You see, Jesus, Jesus is trying to get us to think a little bit deep, deeper about what it is that we see in people. What do I mean? Have you ever gone into a place, maybe a Home Depot or a Lowe's, and for those of you who might be watching online later on when this is streamed, I would like you to send a message to Home Depot and Lowe's and let them know that we deserve our pay for me <laughs> dropping their names in the sermon. But maybe, maybe you've been in a place like me and you need to reach something on a shelf. All my height challenge people in the congregation know exactly what I'm talking about. When there's paint or something, or something a little heavy that you can't lift. And so you go on a search, searching for the most abled person, the, the, the person with the greatest height who can meet the need that you have. You go and you look for them because there's this paint or this thing that is out of your depth that only they can handle for you. And so you search and you hope that they can help meet a need. And I wonder if that small example of the way that we search out people who can meet a need for us in our times of need can teach us something about the way we treat people in communities of faith. What am I talking about? I'm so glad that you asked the question. You see, this manager, this master of this manager only sees value in his manager because he has brought something to the table. It is not until he brings something to the table that he's seen as valuable. Other than that, this manager sees himself as invaluable and he begins to plot out what life is going to look like once he's fired. He says, well, maybe, you know, I'll be a beggar and, and I'm already preparing what the story is that I'm going to tell people because if I beg, I know that they'll welcome me in and hopefully they will extend hospitality to me. He's making plans for what life will look like when he is seen as invaluable to his master. I wonder, I wonder how many people have come into our walls over the last few months, maybe the last few weeks, and thought to themselves, I don't have anything of value to add to this community of faith. Maybe we have been like the shrewd master and thought to ourselves, we ought to be looking for people who can add to our numbers, who can add to our coffers, because ultimately we have bills to pay. Right? And those things are important. Those things are true. But how narrow might our vision have been that we pushed people away because they came in as couples and they didn't have children. And so we didn't see them as valuable. They came in as people without degrees or status, and so we didn't see them as valuable. They came in simply wanting a place for community, but because they couldn't add to our praise band or maybe couldn't be a greeter or they didn't have all of the skills to be able to quote scripture, we didn't see them as valuable. I wonder, it is very easy to look at this text and to say, oh, well, the, the manager was so shrewd and often, it is our position to look down on the manager, but I wonder if Luke might have been trying to get our attention to say, how church have you been the manager? How church have you not sought to open your doors and open your arms wide so that people might feel welcome? Outside we have a flag that hangs over the building and it says where the welcome is real. I'm glad that today is National Back to Church Sunday, and I'm glad that we get to break in this new kitchen that we've invested so much in, because now we get to lean into what that welcome will feel like. Setting tables where no one will be left without a seat, opening spaces where no one will be left without a meal. 
creating space for people to be seen and heard in a way that maybe they have not experienced before. I want to take us very quickly to another chapter in the book of Luke, Luke 14. One second to get there. Jesus says it this way, when you host a banquet, don't host a banquet for those who you know will be able to pay you back, but instead invite the lame, the crippled, the blind, and the deaf. Now, I want to park right here and let you know that that language is antiquated, and so we should not be referring to people with disability as, as lame, crippled, uh, deaf, and blind. Maybe, maybe we should do some work around the language there, but the point that Jesus is making is that in those days and in that time, those people were seen as people who could not bring anything to the table. And yet, Jesus says that it is these very people that we should be inviting into our places of worship, into our communities of faith. So as we think about the future, as we think about what it means to be a community of faith in this day and in this time, how might we fall into those categories? Maybe we would consider ourselves to be those who have been cast out. And so you find home and you find rescue and respite here, right? How might you extend that welcome to someone else? How might we say that we have found love and peace and grace in this place and acceptance? How might we share that message with someone else? That is what I believe this parable of the shrewd manager is trying to get at, get at. What will we do with that which we have been given so that people might experience the love and grace of God in and through us? My prayer for us is that we will wrestle very intently with what it means to welcome people in who may not be able to give us anything back for what we give to them. Maybe they can't give anything tangibly, but may we know the love of God through them in ways that we have not known before. May we get to know peace that we have not known before. And may we lean into the truth that this is a place where the welcome can be real because we are working to make it so. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, we've come to that point in our service where we get to go before God in prayer. There are a few prayer requests that have been shared with me here, but maybe there are some that are on your hearts and minds that we don't know about. Those whom you don't have words to articulate just yet, but you want God to meet a need that only God can. I would invite you to lift those prayers to the forefront of your heart and mind, knowing that God can go places that we can't go and God can do things that we can't do. May you feel held in this community of faith as we go before God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, the one who has been faithful to us even when we haven't been as faithful as we should be to you, the one who has journeyed with us through the highs and lows, the rough and the smooth places of life, the one who sees us when we cry and is there to celebrate with us when we celebrate. God, we are grateful for your presence. God, we're grateful for the presence of this community of faith, of men, women, and people who hold us when life gets rough, who are tangible examples of your presence in our lives those who pick up the phone and reach out to us when we're having a rough day, those who pray for us when we 
are feeling as though we can't take any more. God, we're grateful. God, there are those of us who have needs and concerns on our hearts and our minds, and some of those have been spoken, and some of them we're still trying to figure out the words to articulate what it is that we're feeling and going through. God, we lift up Sonia to you, and we lift up Hannah to you as they are facing challenges and hoping for healing and praying for intervention. God, we pray that you would meet them at the place of their need. Give the doctors wisdom as they seek to give them care. Remind them, God, that they are not on this journey alone, for you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. God, may we live in that truth that there's nothing too hard for you to handle. God, we lift up our leaders, whether they be local, statewide, or national, international. God, we pray that you would give them wisdom, that they would lead in ways that are righteous and equitable and just, considering the needs of all people. God, Scripture says that you hold the heart of a king in your hand and you can turn it whichever way you want to. And so, God, we pray that you would turn the hearts of leaders toward ways that are just and righteous. God, we pray for an end to senseless war. We look forward to the day that we'll be able to say that we have beat our weapons into plowshares and that we will study war no more. Help us, God, to continue to be beacons of light in this community, beacons of love and conduits of peace and joy. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory that it is due. We pray all of this with the same confidence that we have learned to pray, our God who is in heaven. Holy are your names. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the bread that we need and forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the screen you will see that there are three ways for you to give. I want to remind you that while it does take your continued generosity to do the work that we do here, it is not just monetary gifts that keeps the work of Emmanuel going. Um, maybe you are in a place and in a season of your life where giving financially is a bit difficult for you. We believe that you can contribute both your, your time, your talent, and your treasure to the work that is happening here. In whatever way you decide to give, whether it be through your time, talent, treasure, or by mail, online, or in person in a moment when those trays come past you, we want to thank you for your continued generosity. We would not be able to do and continue to do the work that we do if it were not for your giving. Before we take up the offering, I'd like to pray for it, and then we'll go from there. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, the one who gives all good things to your children. God, we pray that you would take what is just a small portion of that which you have given to us and make it be what you need it to be so that we can continue to be that which you have called us to be in this place and beyond. God, we trust you to meet every need that we have, knowing that Scripture promises that you are the God who will provide and we lean upon that promise today. We pray all of this in your holy names. Amen.
Hello again. Um, just a couple announcements. Uh, the weather is raining, but um, it's supposed to rain for another couple of days, so we actually got all the vegetables. Some got it Friday, some got Saturday, and some got t today in between the rain. So we're good for the rain, uh, garden gathering and watering for the week. Yay, I guess. And um, some you may enjoy today. Um, but uh, see what next week brings as the weather cooperates for stuff to still harvest. And thank you for your love and support that you've given us this year again. Uh, some upcoming events this week. Um, if you haven't gotten a bulletin, there's some things on there that we're, now that we're do doing these again. So feel free to take one home with you. I apologize last week. I uh, didn't get them out uh, to be printed. And uh, so I apologize to Holly for not coordinating that enough with her <laughs> to get those out to you. But uh, we'll hopefully continue this going forward. Um, so we have a deacon's meeting on Tuesday night. It's a hybrid meeting. Choir practice begins Wednesday at 7. Anybody who can sing or think they can sing, come join us. Praise bands next week. Okay. Wednesday at 6, choir at 7. And um, Circle 4 is the following Tuesday at 1.30 in the fellowship room. And would you like to announce... Your big events. Thank you. Well, um, you can't quite smell it, but Terry has been slaving over the grill, and he has good hamburgers and hot dogs and some plant-based uh, burgers also. For all of you, we want everyone to join us downstairs after the service. Uh, we have a pretty big spread, and speaking of the garden, a lot of the ingredients that we use came from our garden. So thank you to all of you who have sacrificed your, your blood, sweat, and tears for our, our garden. It's very helpful to us. And lest we forget, um, in your bulletin also, we have the 28th is our first community open table dinner. Finally. <laughs> 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 So we're going to get this rolling, but we really need all of your help. Um, this is definitely a combined effort. And so um, I, di I didn't get the sign-up sheets up here in the front today. I'm, I apologize. But I will have the sign-up sheets downstairs. So you can look those over if you want to bring any ingredients or if you actually want to help physically with serving or clean up or set up or something like that. So... Again, the community dinners are going to be the last Wednesday of each month. So we will keep the ingredients and all those sign-up sheets posted for those each month. So thank you again very much for your help. Yes. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't explain that, did I? Um, usually the Sunday before the meal. But if you're not going to be here and you want to bring it ahead of time, just let us know and we'll, we'll take care of it. So. Thanks again very much. And please, please join us downstairs. Please. Um, just a reminder, if anyone has anything, um, concerns on their hearts or things that are being prayed for, we have the prayer cards at the front and back of the church. We can get them in the bulletin. Um, pray. And if you need to talk to Pastor JJ, there he is. Um, there's information on the website to set up an appointment or see him today. And uh, any con joys or concerns about any topic, please reach out to him. He's here to serve us. Good morning. Um, in conjunction with the Circle Four, we are still collecting items for the hygiene kits and the, and the school kits that go through Church World Service for distribution. Um, if you don't want to shop, we're happy to take your money and shop for you. So if you can help us out, that's great. And again, we will be meeting on Tuesday the 28th. Mark your calendars. It's the, it's the fourth Tuesday of each month. All ladies of the church are welcome to attend. Thank you. So just a quick reminder that I don't have any
just before we transition into celebrating the sacrament of communion, I want to remind you all that this week is the last week that Ed will be with us. And so I want to take a moment just to celebrate Ed's gift and the gift that he has been to us as a congregation. Um, if you all would join me in giving him a round of applause and then... Ed, we will miss you, but I want to extend a prayer to you, and so if you all would join me by extending your hands in this direction as we pray for you as you go into this next season, hopefully it is a restful one. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your child, Ed, and we thank you for the gift that he has been to this congregation for the time that he has been here. God, we pray that you will surround him with your love with your care, with your compassion. And if it be your will for us to be extensions of your grace around him, God, through this next season, embolden us to be that. God, we pray that this next season of life for him will be rest-filled, joy-filled, and that he will know that he has contributed greatly to the life of this church. We pray all of this in your holy names. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. And with that, we will transition into celebrating the sacrament of communion. I'm going to invite the deacons to come forward. And as they are coming, I want to remind you all that here at Emmanuel, we practice what is called an open table. That is to say that the table belongs to Christ. And because it belongs to Christ, I or we don't have a say in who can come to the table. And so whether you have been a longtime believer, a longtime doubter, or... You just don't believe at all. We hope and pray that you might experience the love and grace of God in a way that maybe you haven't experienced it before as you join us in celebrating this sacrament together. Friends, I'm going to invite you to come and accept or receive the body of Christ and the cup of love poured out for you. Those of you who might be waiting, you can come up the center aisle and then I'm going to invite you to go down the side aisles so that we are not congested. Friends, 
In celebrating the sacrament of communion, we remember Jesus. We remember the price that he paid for who he was and what he said and what he did for our benefit. On the night before Jesus was crucified, he met with his disciples. And after having a meal, he took a piece of bread and he broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. Likewise, he took a cup and after blessing it, he poured it saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Today we remember the ways in which Christ lived and died so that he might be an example for us and to us. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, giver of all good things, God, you give us simple elements of bread and the fruit of the vine so that we might be reminded of your presence with us. God, be with us in this moment. Need us together as bread is needed together that we might be one holy and living body of Christ both in these walls and beyond. We pray all of this in your holy names. Amen. Friends, I am not Jesus, but I will invite you to take your bread and break it, knowing that this is the body of Christ given for us. I share this truth with us every time that we have communion in hopes that every time you taste anything that is like the fruit of the vine, you might be reminded of God's steadfast love for you, knowing that there is nothing more or less that you can do to make God love you as much as God already does. Drink from the cup of love. Thank you, God, for the gift of communion. Amen. Friends, receive this benediction. May you go knowing that life has a funny way of causing us to look at people and consider what they might bring to the table. May you go pushing that urge to find out what I can get out of the next person to the side and instead lean into the urge of loving them for who they are, being in the love of God in flesh. May you go knowing that loving sometimes is difficult, but that God promises to be with us every step of the way. May that truth bring you peace. And may you go in peace. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all downstairs. Amen.